Okay, um, let's see how many potatoes are left. How many potatoes do we have left? Come on, potatoes. Come on out of there. Don't be shy. One, two. We have two potatoes left. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to give away one now and then one after the Wi-Fi award. So here's how we're going to do this one. I want to see who was the most efficient on their exams. So let's start by anybody that took an exam this week. I want you guys to stand up. If you took an exam, stand up. Okay. All right. So, uh, by the way, congratulations. If Oh, you took... Well, I, okay. I guess we should probably... Okay. If you passed if, if you passed an exam, then stay standing up. If you did not pass an exam, man, now I feel bad because it'll call you out. I think you guys all passed. So we look good. Okay. So if you got below a 95%, then, or if you got above a 95%, then go ahead and sit down. Anybody above 95%? Sam. If you got, what's that? It's for being inefficient. Very inefficient of you, Sam. Okay, if you got above a 90%, go ahead and sit down. Anybody above a 90%? Oh, wow, that, that chopped out a lot right there. Anybody above 85%? Anybody above 85%, go ahead and sit down. Anybody above 80%, sit down. Above 80%. Anybody above 75%? Okay, anybody above 70%? I know, I know. So we've got two people that were above 70%. You already got a potato. You guys both have potatoes already? Super efficient, yeah. Oh, you. Yes, I could see you because the light right there. All right, congrats, Tawny. Now, nobody else is allowed to catch this. I'm going to throw this potato to you, okay? JD, sit down. Oops, sorry, a little short. Like I said, they don't fly very well. Congratulations. Good job on efficiency. You did not study any more than was required. Good job. Okay, this potato is still up for grabs. And so um, after this session, there's going to be some awards or something. I don't know. It seems really dumb. I don't know what it is. But anyway, we're going to give away the real award, which is the last potato here. So I'm just going to leave this right up here. And uh, let's go ahead and announce who our next and second to last speaker of the entire conference is. So uh, so this guy is a C, uh, an SE at IB Wave, and he focuses on conversions of Wi-Fi, IoT, and cellular technologies. I'd like to welcome to the stage Jamul or uh, Jamal Ramul from IB Wave. Come on up. I was all prepared. being here. Um, I'm going to talk today about how little things matter and how the smallest of errors can lead to the biggest network performance issues. Um, the title, don't, don't pay attention, I'm okay. just follow. Okay. We all know um, that great Wi-Fi starts with proper design. Our friend Andrew. Are you here, Andrew? No? Um, a good design is essential for a properly functional wireless. Line. This is from the CWDP manual. Okay. Um, good Wi-Fi design is critical for friendship. Um, but Wi-Fi is easy to do wrong. Keith, right? Um, our director of research, Vladan, said small muttering errors can lead to bad design. Okay. What can go wrong? There is many, many things that can go wrong. I can't give everything, but just going to try to focus on some stuff regarding um, the modeling, basically. First, floor scan. Inaccurate floor scan. Um, not considering floors, like all floors. You consider one or two floor or no floor. We're going to see what's the impact. Um, neglecting inclined surface. If you have any inclined surface, like in a stadium, or if you have like escalators, like in a shopping mall or something, what's the impact? Um, relying Relying on marketing antenna pattern. So we're going to see what's, what, what's the marketing antenna pattern. And um, not using ray tracing model. Um, 
you ever heard of wage basing model, I'm gonna explain what it is. And improper 3D modeling, for, for example, missing walls, um, wrong material or wrong loss values, all those are important stuff. Maybe it's, it does not appear as important, but we're gonna see that it could really impact um, the, the, the design and the performance uh, afterwards. Um, let's start with the floor scaling. Anybody here ever used a door to scale a floor plan? Use your hand, don't be shy. Yes, I did. Um, in Canada, we use one meter for a typical door width, uh, which is equivalent to like 3.28 feet. In, in the US, for example, you guys use maybe three feet for a door, which is 0.91 meter. This is kind of a 9% difference, but when you calculate your square footage, you get about 20% error. So which one is correct? One meter or three feet? Doesn't really matter. Please, guys, don't use doors to scale floor plan. Um, just use the longest measured path. And make sure it's measured. Because if you get a, a length, it might be during construction, it's bigger, smaller, whatever. Um, the best possible way to, to scale a floor plan, the most accurate way, is to use a measured path. And for that, you could use whatever, laser, distance measure, you could use a measuring wheel, or you could just go to Google Earth and draw uh, a ruler and you get your, your length from one point to, to another. This is regarding floor scanning. So how about signals coming from other floors? Let's say you, you scaled your floor plan, you modeled your building, you have a nice whatever building, um, 3D modeled, you put real good scanning, you choose the material, you put your APs, you connected all the APs, and all the design is perfect, and then you start running the prediction. If you only consider one floor instead of all the floors, you get a huge difference. In, the, uh, in this example, we have CCI prediction for one floor compared to CCI prediction considering all the floors. And it's completely different. You have like four, four CCI when you consider one floor, and you have up to like 13 CCI. And this is for channel 11, I believe. So obviously this is 2.4, um, but we can consider that using different floors, using all the floors possible. Um, how about inclined surface? We have in this example um, a prediction made using just a flat surface for an escalator in a shopping mall. And you have like an AP covering the area, and you see like in the um, first image on the left, it's not too bad, the coverage. But if you use inclined surface, it's like 20 dB difference. So that is, that is, that is the difference when you use inclined versus flat surface. Um, antenna pattern, that's my favorite part. We all saw that, right? It's a horizontal, vertical cut from the antenna pattern. And this is what I call marketing antenna pattern because when you take this one and you do interpolation from this 2D cut to get your pattern, it's gonna look like this, which is nice panel antenna or patch antenna, has little side lobes and really nice main, main lobes, right? But in reality, when you measure it, it's gonna look like this. So please, my message to the OEMs, give us 3D measurements. We want more accurate. And this is an example when you use um, 2D cuts, interpolated from 2D cuts, in inclined surface with a down-tilted antenna, and then what's the difference in measure, in, in 3D measured pattern. And you see like the side lobes and a little bit the back lobes, you get more bleeding on the sides uh, than you would on just the marketing antenna pattern. Now let's talk about the propagation model. So my question for you, what, what algorithm, are you, algorithm are you using for your predictive heat map? Anybody have an idea what kind of algorithm? And just give it straight to you. If it's not based on ray tracing, it's not accurate enough. Why? Ray tracing is the model that considers all paths. The direct path, reflected path, and diffracted path. This is the most accurate way to get your RSSI. And at iWave, we use fast ray tracing, which is, let's say, a lighter version. It does not take all the path, because if you do that, it's gonna take maybe days to <laughs> do the computation. So we take the most, the strongest one, um, like a limited number, which may account for maybe 90% or 95%, 
of your composite power. So the RSSI will be more accurate if you're doing that than if you're doing um, empirical model, for example. There's different algorithms used in the industry, but ray tracing is, is, the, most, is the most accurate. So by, by limiting the number of rays, we have faster computing time and close to accuracy in terms of RSSI. So that's, that's the algorithm you need to use. And just, just that as an example, um, in video games, they started using this algorithm for the ray of light to get more like a natural uh, scene, to get the reflection of the light. And you see here in this example, this is a screenshot from Battlefield 5 on PC, uh, because it's not yet available on, on game consoles. It should, should come next in PS5 and new Xbox. But this is on, uh, using uh, NVIDIA GTX um, GPU, and you see that the ray tracing off compared to the ray tracing on how the scene is more natural because you have all the light reflection on, on the card compared to the other one. Then you could use this ray tracing, but in order to take advantage of it, you would need proper 3D modeling. You'll have to have accurate floor plans, um, ideally CAD drawings. You would need correct materials, um, correct walls. Uh, you use horizontal inclined surface. You need the accurate values in terms of uh, material loss, in terms of the transmission loss, in terms of the reflection, diffraction loss value. And you could go crazy and model a nice building with all the details, the furnitures, the plants if you want, and make it really accurate. But the problem is that which material to use when you, you select your material? Um, you have so many options. Um, let's say you could use concrete, cement, brick, but they have different loss values, and they differ from 2.4 to 5. Um, then if you want to use, let's say, drywall or sheetrock or chipboard, they, they also have different values. And my preferred one is glass. A, wi <laughs> a classic window, like classic glass for window, and a low E glass is like 30 dB difference. It, it can change everything in your design. So. The question for you is that, how do you know if the material has the correct loss value? You could assume stuff, right? So it's most, most of the time, it's a guess. You could use an APM stick, measure the wall loss. I have a signal, measure it in front of the wall, go behind the wall, and measure it, right? But this is time consuming. And you, could, you, you can't measure the reflection and the diffraction loss. You can only measure the direct path loss. How about using the measurement from passive survey? Have you thought about it? You do your passive survey, right? You have an existing network, or you have an APM stick, and you're doing your survey. You have the data, you have the measurement in front of the wall, and you have the measurement behind the wall. How if we could use, preferably, the least capable, most important device to capture this what if, this what is the coverage, and use this data to fine tune your propagation model so that so we could have accurate wall loss values, adjust the reflection and refraction and diffraction loss value, and also use that as a template to do the what if. So what if I move the AP? What if I change the power? What if I change the channel? What if I add an AP? What if I remove an AP? And still have an accurate prediction. Then that is a solution for that. And um, I call it the calibration magic. Um, which is automatic fine tuning. So use the survey data. You have a survey data. You have all the RSSI value from given AP. And then you import that into the tool, and you ask the tool, please compare your predictive heat maps with the survey heat maps and adjust the wall loss value. And you see on the last column, you have the default value. Um, you have the reflection loss. You have the transmission loss. You have some factors used in the algorithm. And then you have the calibrated value. Now you adjusted your value and you create a template. Now you could use the template. And then you have more accurate prediction. Now, how does this work? Well, step one, you need to capture the what if, like I said. Uh, preferably using the LCMI device. Why? Because you want this RSSI sensitivity of your most uh, least capable, most important device, right? Um, if you did CWDP, you may heard of it a lot. Um, 
then do your passive survey either it's it's an existing network you capture what 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 is installed what's the actual coverage or using an api on stick if there is nothing it's a new it's a new project there is no api installed so you capture the data you can see here this is what we did um, about a year and a half ago at our office in Abu Wave. I just walked, captured the data. Um, there is an existing network, obviously. Some IT guy just put some APs around and put maximum power. <laughs> and um, so I just walked and captured the data. And this is the heat map from the passive survey. Now I took this data and actually I replicate the design. So I put the same AP model. Um, at the exact same location, same height, same power, same channel, same SSID. So it's just the same as it is installed, actually. So what is installed? It was replicated. Then I run the heat map based on the assumption I made for, for, the, for, the, for the walls. So the concrete, the drywall, the glass, the doors. I did my best. So I've done my best to get the most accurate um, 3D modeling with accurate scaling, um, everything possible. And then run the heat map and you see it does not look like, uh, like the survey one, right? It's, it's, it's completely different. Then um, I start the calibration process and the tool will capture the, uh, the data from the measurement, compare it to the prediction and adjust the different values. Now I, I created a template and then assign it to each AP. And then the APs, once they have the calibration template, now they're not going to use the value that I assumed for the wall loss. They're going to use the new value, the calibrated value. And I rerun the heat map, and it's gonna, it, was, it was looking like this. It's more like what the survey data showed me. It's more like the survey heat map. Then I did the what, what if. How? If, if I move the AP, if I adjust the power, obviously I reduce the power, it was, it was just maximum power, and then move the AP around by avoiding having them, having them in, in corridors, and um, I rerun the heat map, and this is what I get, and then it's pretty close to what it should be when I do the survey after that. Um, so just to compare again, um, the survey data compared to the prediction, it's looking like this because everything made in the prediction is mostly a guess. I don't know the loss value. But when I do the, the calibration, then this is what it looks like. And it's pretty impressive. This is done in the cellular world. Everybody who's using our tool for cellular is doing that to get accurate prediction. If, if, if you do something, if, you, if you're doing a DAS or small cell design, working with any, car any carrier, they will ask you to do that. They will do like a, what we call a CW test, which is kind of AP on stick survey, and then calibrate the, 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 the algorithm to get accurate prediction. Then when you install it, you're pretty confident that what, what, you, what you've done into your prediction will match what is installed. And when you do the survey after that, it's going to match what you did on the prediction, on your design. So my message to you is that use, please use an accurate predictive model um, in order, and use best practice, obviously, um, in order to deliver high-performing network. Because let's face it, life is too short for bad Wi-Fi. Thank you. Any questions for Jamal? Any questions at all? All right, very good. Hey, thanks for that. That was excellent. Thank you so much.